Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Now, this is going to be for real my last butterfly video because, well, I've taught you everything I've known. I know. <laughs> so, I wanted to do one last video because I also raise swallowtails, to be specific, black swallowtail butterflies. And I really wanted to share with you all about the swallow, the black swallowtail because one, it's kind of the coolest caterpillar in almost the whole wide world. And two, because these are really easy caterpillars for you and your family to um, raise just on your patio or on your deck by planting their host plants in pots. So, and I'm gonna get to that. So this is video four, Justine Frolker here, and we're gonna talk about swallowtails today. So first off, here is all the different kinds of swallowtails. Can you believe it? There are so many kinds of swallowtails. So these top two at the top, on the left side of the screen, these are the black swallowtails. The yellow is the male and the blue is the female. These are the ones that I raise mostly because they're really easy in regards to what they, the caterpillars eat. But also here at my house, I see a lot of tiger swallowtails. They love, love, love all the flowers in my garden. Um, and then I do see, see this one down here is a red spotted purple. That is not a swallowtail, but a lot of times people confuse it because of the blue on its wings. And then sometimes I also will, um, what I really want, I want the pipe vine um, swallowtail, these two down here but um, those grow on vines and we don't, I don't have those in the area that I live. I could probably put them in uh, pots, but they're not the easiest plants. The rest of these swallowtails all feed on different kinds of cherry trees and ash trees. So it's really not common for you to find those kinds of caterpillars, but you'll see those butterflies in your gardens if you plant native uh, nectar flowers in your gardens, okay? So the ones that we're gonna talk about are these ones at the top, black swallowtails. So the black swallowtail is actually found out throughout North America, all the way to Canada, all the way south, like all throughout North America. So you're gonna see them no matter where you're viewing this from if you live in North America. Here is again a close up of your female has the blue on the um, lower parts of her wings, whereas the male has more of the yellow. So there's a really big difference. You can tell a big difference in the male to the female with the black swallowtail. Unlike with the monarch butterfly, remember it was just those two circles on their lower wings. Here is what makes this really easy for all of you to do this at home with your parents' help, obviously. But the black swallowtail feeds on really easy everyday plants that you can pot in pots and put on your porch or on your patios or on your decks. So they're probably their favorite, in my opinion, are parsley, dill, and fennel. Plus, you can use parsley, dill, and fennel in your cooking. Um, rue, I don't know if you can use that in your cooking. I never have. However, be, be prepared. If you and your family plant a pot of parsley and you're like, oh, let's go cut some parsley for dinner tonight to garnish our dinner with tonight, these caterpillars will strip them clean. They are very hungry caterpillars. They will eat all of your plants, okay? But these are really easy plants to find at any nursery, or you can also order seeds um, from Amazon. I just ordered some dill and fennel seeds from Amazon and got them planted um, today. So those are what the, that's the host plants, which are what the caterpillars eat. All right, here's your comparison. Now remember from the monarch videos, remember that this egg here on the left is a monarch egg. It's because remember it's faceted and shiny and sparkly like a diamond, whereas it's next to the swallowtail egg. So this is a macro picture, which means it's taken really, really zoomed in. So these are again, very tiny, just like smaller than the size of a tip of a pen. So the, swall the black swallowtail egg is a smooth kind of light yellow and it almost looks like a pearl in some ways. It's not faceted like the monarch butterfly egg. Here is the egg right before it's getting ready to hatch. See that dark spot right here on top of the egg? That is the caterpillar's head. That is its sign to me that that little larva is soon to come out of that egg. And there is a close-up picture. Oh my gosh, I love that picture. And just like the monarch caterpillar, that little larva, baby, 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 baby caterpillar, comes out of its egg and turns around and eats it. 
it's its first meal. It's lots of good stuff and protein to fuel its growth. Because again, it's got to grow quite a bit. Here is your comparison. So here is a brand new swallowtail caterpillar with a brand new monarch caterpillar. So the swallowtail looks a lot different. It's got a white stripe on it and it's like brown and black, whereas the monarch caterpillar is like gray, basically. And they both have little tiny hairs on them only when they're really this small. They don't really have that many hairs on them as they grow. Here is another close up. So you can see, see it's already changed colors here on the left. This is just a couple days out of coming out of that egg. It molts just like the monarch caterpillar walks out of its old skin, but the crazy part about black swallowtails is that every time it molts, it looks like a completely different caterpillar, like changes colors and everything. So here on the left, you can see it's kind of orange and black, or orange and brown and still has a white stripe, but then very quickly it adds more orange and gets its spikes. Um, so this is like a, like a few days in. The craziest part about swallowtails is that they really have no timeline. So if you remember from the monarch videos, I know exactly how long I'm gonna have a monarch caterpillar. They are in their egg for three to five days. They are caterpillars for two weeks where they eat a lot. And then they're in the chrysalis for two weeks and then they're a butterfly. So for about what, like one month, almost to the day, no matter what. Whereas swallowtails, they kind of are on all of their own timeline. You never know when, or how fast they're gonna grow, or when they're gonna molt, or when they're gonna go into their chrysalis, or how long they're gonna stay in their chrysalis, which is what I shared on that Facebook Live a couple weeks ago. So that some of them will even overwinter and spend months with me in their chrysalis. So here is, this is actually a video. I'm gonna mute the sound. This gives you a really good idea of all the different sizes of caterpillars, okay? So this is a big swallowtail, that's a big guy, and he is munching away on dill. He uses his front three legs to guide it in. I don't know if it's a boy or a girl. You can't tell if it's a boy or a girl as a, as a caterpillar right now. So this is on the macro lens. So again, it's kind of shaky. So I'm sorry about that. But then look at that one. So that one's a little bit younger, completely different color. He's almost all black with orange spots. So he's a little bit younger than that first caterpillar that was munching away. And now here we're going to zoom in on a, a baby baby. So that one's probably just a few days old. And then I've got a close-up of one eaten away. See how little that guy is? And he's, he's working really, really hard to eat that flower bud. Again, that's a dill, that's dill flower. So if I had left that dill outside to grow, those yellow flowers would, would turn to seed and fall off the plant and more dill would grow. It smells really good too. And here is a really good close-up of this big guy chowing down some dill plant. There's more big guys. Here I show you his mouth really close up. So just like the monarch caterpillar, they eat and poop, eat and poop, eat and poop. Except I will tell you, swallowtail poop doesn't smell as bad as monarch poop because it smells like dill. Whereas monarch poop doesn't really smell like, milkweed doesn't smell much except for the flower. Okay, so there's that one. So here is their defenses. So the caterpillar of the black swallowtail actually has two defenses against its predators. One, they look like bird poop. Just look, let's go back and look. That kind of looks like bird poop, doesn't it? That looks like bird poop, especially if you're like a bird or another insect flying above a plant. It looks like bird poop. So they look like bird poop. The other, craziest and coolest defense that they have against their predators is their osmet, I never can pronounce this right, osmetry, os, I practiced it like three times, you guys. And chat, my husband, Chad, even tried to help me. Osmetrium, osmetrium, that's it, osmetrium, I believe, I think. So anyways, I just call them their really crazy, cool horns. And this is where you'll see. All right. So in this, this is a video, but one, see this tiny little caterpillar right there? He's little. Then this one's a little bit older, and then this one's much older. Same with this one down here. But this one, they're gonna show their defenses. Now again, remember, I raise monarchs. 
I've raised them for a long, or I've raised caterpillars and um, monarchs and swallowtails for a long time. So I know what is safe for them. So don't handle caterpillars and monarchs unless you're really, really used to it or you're a professional like me, okay? Because we don't want to hurt them by accident. All right, so here you go. Check this out. Right there, did you see that little orange thing? You'll see it better on this guy. Right there. They're so weird, Look, and there he got me. Okay, so here's the deal. <laughs> I'll show you that again. So here's the deal. Well, one, you can see all the poop that's on the bottom of that container, but there are little horns. They're gonna reel, rear their head when an insect touches them to try to get them to go away. Or worst case, they'll bring out their little orange horns. And you can see on my fingernail, you can see on my fingernail that it literally has left like wet because those little orange horns, they smell, okay, I don't know what else to describe it as. It smells like rotten banana poo. Like if bananas went number two, and then it rotted, that's what it would smell like. It's, it's weird and terrible. So those horns come out to protect them from their predators. All right, and here are all their predators. So first off, they have kind of two different predators, but swallowtails are not endangered like the monarch butterfly. They're just really fun to raise and they're beautiful, okay? So that's why I raise them. So first off, this tachnid fly, which you saw that when I showed you the monarchs, okay? Along with spiders, I tried to find a really cute picture of a spider, you guys, because ugh, when you Google spider, they are not fun pictures. So I chose to pick this really cute one. And then a ladybug. So these three guys down here, you'll see, um, they are predators in that they eat the eggs of swallowtails. So sometimes I'll go out and check the plants and it will just be the egg casing and there's nothing inside the egg, it looks empty because a ladybug or a spider or a tachnid fly have eaten the insides. Versus the paper wasp, the red paper wasp and the tachnid flies, just like with the monarchs, they parasitize them. In other words, they lay their eggs on the caterpillars and then the caterpillar become the host for the babies of the wasp or the fly. And unfortunately, I had that happen to me last year. I had a couple swallowtails who were spending the winter with me in their chrysalis. And you see this guy right here in the, the um, upper right. See that leg coming out of that chrysalis? That's a, a paper wasp. Ugh. So they would eat a hole <laughs> out of the chrysalis and then they, then they cause they, they killed the, the, the caterpillar that was in there and then fed on it to become the wasp. Oh my gosh, it's so weird. It's like aliens. Okay, maybe, but it's just bugs. And then it would crawl out and fly away. <laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> it was so sad. All right, so those are the swallowtail predators. Okay, so we still we there's always a life cycle in a, in a food chain. All right, so here, once that caterpillar has eaten for a while and grown and molted multiple times, but again, it's not in this two week period. Sometimes it can last. I don't know, it's, sometimes it lasts for a whole month. They don't, they don't really seem to have a timeline. They are going to go into their pupation position, which is actually what this is. You can see it's kind of hanging by a hammock or what we call a girdle. And I got it on video to show you. So I'm gonna show you here. 20, I wanna go to 24, here you go. I kind of get close. So what's happening is he has spun silk from his mouth, just like the monarch, to one, stick his bottom legs, his rear end to the glass. But then what he does is he has to then spin, he or she, spin what we call the girdle. Or sometimes I like to call it a hammock because it kind of looks like a hammock more. But it spins this girdle. Oh, there's Bosco in the background. You can see my puppy Bosco. So that's what he's doing right here. He's spinning this girdle around him. And you can see that line right there. That's a silk thread. And what he'll do is then he will then sneak his head underneath it to hang from it. And he'll hang from it for a day, maybe two days. It just kind of depends. They're kind of on their own timeline. Let's see if I can get him doing it again. He's kind of stuck there. There he is. So you see he's, he's spinning a loop. He's spinning a loop with his mouth out of thread, 
out of silk so that he can then hang for it from it so that he can go into full metamorphosis. I have yet to catch it on video of when they slip their head back inside that loop. I've never caught that on video yet. Goals for sure. All right. Here's a really fast video of kind of what it looks like for them to pupate. It's too long. I don't want to bore you, but just like the caterpillar, just like the caterpillar of the monarch butterfly, it's the skin of the caterpillar splits here at the top behind its head. But it's not ups, it's like upside down compared to the monarch butterfly. And it's going to zip its caterpillar skin down and out of it and then hang from that girdle or the hammock that's right here, and then that silk pad right here. So it's much the same, except our chrysalis look, what looks way different than a monarch. So it still is gonna zip out of its old caterpillar skin. And then what happens is it looks like that. Isn't that crazy? So one of the other cool parts about swallowtails is that the chrysalis can be really tiny or a little bit big. And it also can be pretty much any shade of green and brown. And some people will say that the color of the chrysalis depends on what the caterpillar chooses to pupate on. Like if it pupates on a twig, it'll be a brown chrysalis. If it pupates on um, a leaf stem, it'll be green. However, I don't really necessarily find that to be true. I really find that they just turn out to be whatever shade of green God made them to be, basically, maybe, or whatever you believe in. All right, here is also one of the cool things. I call this the swallowtail wiggle. You'll see it right at the end. So in the chrysalis, you can see all of the different chrysalis color, <laughs> but then it will wiggle its little bottom to let you know, stay away from me. I need you to walk away from me right now. Here is just a side by side of one that's really small compared to a bigger one and one that's green compared to a brown one. And then just like the monarch butterfly, when they come out of that chrysalis, their bodies are really swollen. They have to pump their wings full of blood. And you can see in the swallowtail, the veins in their wings are yellow while they're pumping their body full um, or their wings full of the blood to expand them. And then they'll wait to dry and then they'll fly away just like the monarch butterfly. And then there is, that's Bosco. He's probably my most famous dog, to be, on, be honest. He's little, he's only nine pounds. And he does not really like the butterflies because um, he's jealous of them. But that is a male black swallowtail butterfly getting ready to fly away. And they are really hard to catch. So once they start flying or if they get out of that net, they are gone. So he was checking out that buddy before he flew off. And that's my swallowtails. All right. So I just want to say thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed um, my monarch videos and my swallowtail videos. And I have loved seeing your questions or seeing the pictures of you watching these videos. And um, don't forget, I'm going to go live on Facebook again a second time on April 7th. Um, that will be in the description of all of these videos to answer all your questions live. So uh, whatever adult that you are with, your parent or your grandparent, wh whatever responsible adult you live with, help, have them help you type in your name, your age, and where you're from in the comments of the YouTube video, and I will answer your question live on April 7th. And also please share these videos with your friends or your teachers and anyone else who you think would like them, because I don't know, butterflies are cool. And right now we're all stuck at home, so it's kind of fun to watch something that's cool. So thank you guys very much.